on Afghanistan, including the so-called crudely named mother of all bombs. Um, and, and these were dropped on schools, on funerals, on weddings, on marketplaces. Um, at least 70,000 civilians were killed. And this number is likely to be far higher because during Obama's presidency, uh, they started describing any male between 18 and 65 in a combat zone, uh, in a strike zone, sorry, as a combatant, um, thereby not counting them as, as civilians. So the toll has been really, really high. And this is the reality of what Western war does, uh, how little it achieves apart from killing scores of people, destroying huge swathes uh, of the country. And in the end, what they've done is made the Taliban stronger than they were in 2001. Uh, and they've allowed groups like ISIS to take hold in the country. This Western imperialist project that has caused so much death and destruction is what the Dicey Arms Fair is an integral part of. In these last 20 years, companies like BA Systems, Raytheon, Lockheed Martin and others have seen their profits soar. Every bomb dropped in an Afghan village was money in their pockets. These are the murderers who will be in the Excel Center selling their death machines uh, and places like Afghanistan, like the Gaza Strip, like Somalia are used by these arms dealers for testing and promoting their weapons. Inside the arms fair, they proudly boast about the weapons that have been so-called battle tested. And these same arms companies are also supplying the technology uh, that is being used to fortify borders to stop refugees from getting to Europe. Um, so they profit from creating the refugees and then they profit from stopping them reaching safety. And even now, our politicians, the neoconservative establishment of which the arms industry uh, is entirely intertwined with, are trying to manipulate the truth uh, and claim that the war was the right decision, that it was moral, that it's only the withdrawal that has been catastrophic. These people continue to believe, or at least want to make us believe, that the only way to help people is to bomb them. They want to pretend like their war had anything to do with protecting women or their rights, uh, you know, because the way to safeguard women is to bomb them. Uh, we have to say categorically no to this backwards, murderous thinking that has already cost so many lives and caused untold destruction and devastation in Afghanistan, in Libya, in Syria, in Iraq, in Palestine, in Somalia. Their bombs don't keep anyone safe, not there and not here. And if these people really cared about Afghan people, they wouldn't have deported 30,000 Afghan refugees in the last 10 years. The British government has spent millions on chartered flights to send Afghan children back to Afghanistan. Theresa May, when she was Home Secretary, this is where you loudly boo. There we go. <laughs> um, she went to court to fight uh, 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 the the blanket ban on, on sending Afghan refugees back and she won and she claimed that Afghanistan was a safe country to send Afghan, uh, uh, Afghan refugees to um, and they after that spent four million pounds on building a so-called reintegration center in Kabul to make it easier particularly to send children back. If this government wants to help the people who are now scared for their lives with the Taliban back in power and we have to insist that they do whether they want to or not uh, what they need to do is create safe and legal routes for refugees. Their number of 5,000 is not enough. Their number of 20,000 over five years is not enough. They must open the borders and let them in now. And I just want to make a couple of other quick points about the war in Afghanistan and the arms industry. Because we've spent the last 10 years being told that we needed austerity because there was no money. At least 120,000 people were killed because directly because of the cuts made to public services and welfare. Our NHS was decimated and left wholly unprepared for the pandemic, which cost another 150,000 lives. But all the while, their magic money tree never stopped bearing fruit for war. The UK spent at least 40 billion pounds on Afghanistan alone. The US spent $2.2 trillion. Uh, and the vast majority of this money was spent on military spending. A, a huge bulk of which went directly into the coffers of the pricks behind there. And this is exactly what is still happening. The Tories will be increasing national insurance, they will be, which will affect the poorest workers the hardest, they will be ending the universal credit uplift, they aren't giving nurses a fair pay rise, they're ending the furlough scheme, 
But meanwhile, they've increased defense spending by 16.5 billion pounds. They've committed more money to the already 200 billion pound price tag of renewing the Trident nuclear missile system. And they're spending millions on sending the Queen Elizabeth aircraft carrier uh, with this flotilla to the South China Sea to ratchet up tensions with China. And all of this while our planet is literally on fire from climate breakdown, of which these weapons are a massive contributor to. Uh, the US military is the single biggest polluter in the world. And the skills of thousands of workers that could be used for green jobs uh, to produce renewable technology are instead being wasted on producing instruments of death. So all these things are connected and the war economy, the role of the arms dealers and Western imperialism is at the heart of it. And we need a concerted, united movement that brings together all the different strands of opposition against this bankrupt system. And let's not forget that it's Priti Patel who is stopping, yeah, like, boo. <laughs> who is stopping Afghan refugees from coming to this country and is at the same time also spearheading the police and crime bill, which will be going to a second reading in parliament next week to limit our ability to protest. But all that means for us is that we need to keep protesting because from here on out, every protest that we have is a direct defiance of this authoritarian legislation. So yeah, I'll end there and I just want to say big up to all of you for being out here. Solidarity to you all, solidarity to our brothers and sisters in Afghanistan. Let's keep protesting, let's keep building this movement. I look forward to seeing you all out here for the remainder of the week. I hope some of you will be out in, in Manchester next month outside the Tory party conference. Um, and I encourage you to get involved with Stop the War and let's keep fighting for peace. Thank you. Yeah.